Hi everyone and welcome to our Q&A for the short films The Misfits and Pigeon Girl. Um, my name is Joanne Parsant. I am the Director of Education for the California Film Institute. My pronouns are she and her. I am a white 50-something woman with round dark rimmed glasses and short curly brown hair. I'm wearing a gray collared shirt and silver hooped earrings. I'm sitting in a home office with a bookshelf on one side of me and a printer and a vase of sunflowers on the other. I am thrilled to have all of these amazing guests with us today. Um, I want to uh, allow them each to introduce themselves and then we'll launch into um, a conversation. So first, um, the director of The Misfits, Ellie Wen. Hi, I'm Ellie Wen, director of The Misfits and really excited to be here. Um, I am an Asian American woman in her 30s, um, straight black hair, wearing glasses in a home office and wearing a blue shirt. And then two of your awesome film subjects. Let's start with um, Emma Bethel. Hi, um, I'm Emma. I'm one of the misfits. Um, I'm a white college student with bleach blonde hair, wearing a yellow shirt and in a very bland white room. <laughs> and then another subject from the misfits, Maddie Wu. Yes, so as Joanne just said, I'm Maddie Wu. Um, I am an Asian American college student. I'm also one of the subjects of Ellie's documentary. Um, I'm in my bedroom with a purple wall and some plants that I've grown in quarantine. Awesome. And then the director of Pigeon Girl, Whitney Legg. Hi everyone, it's such a pleasure to be here. Um, my name is Whitney Legg. I am a white um, woman and I am in my 30s. I am wearing a camouflage uh, shirt. I have uh, brown hair and I'm in a very white room as well. So thank you. And last but not least, uh, the film subject of Pigeon Girl, Mariam. Hi, I'm Mariam Barduka. I am a 12 year old girl with long brown hair. I am currently sitting in a car and there is a pigeon cage in the background. <laughs> of course there is. Welcome to all of you. Um, so maybe just to get, actually, let's start off with the fact that uh, Ellie and Whitney, that you guys uh, actually created your films in the Stanford MFA Documentary Studies Program at the same time, um, just so that we can all get a sense of uh, the camaraderie in the room. If you could tell us a little bit about um, that connection and how you guys work together on making your films in that program. Yeah, so it's really exciting to be here and to be here with Whitney and Miriam from Pigeon Girl. Um, we actually, yeah, went to Stanford together, Whitney and I, and it's really special because these are both of our thesis films. And so we actually had a screening where the subjects from both of our films were able to meet. And so it's just a wonderful reunion virtually right now. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll echo um, some of that. It was it was really lovely to spend time with Ellie during the Stanford program, which was two years long. We make films throughout the program. And it was wonderful because we had both picked stories that had to deal with women, girls fighting to make a difference in their communities and trying to believe in what they do. And pigeons and robots had more similarities than we thought, um, especially in the editing room. So to be able to work side by side with Ellie on a project that was kind of similarly toned to how do we find these, these women and find their strengths and also their struggles and their victories. And it was just cool to be able to sync up that way creatively. Um, and also with like the social angle of these girls' stories. So I felt like in the editing rooms or in the conversations in the, with the cohort, Ellie and I were always kind of in tandem um, with that vision and our values. So it's awesome to be here and share this, this space together. So, yeah. Yeah, well, that was definitely my experience when I saw the films that it was just like such an obvious pairing to me because it was so great to see this, those similarities and that sense of just, you know, strong female subjects, young female subjects and um, that, yeah, I could immediately see how those resonated. So it was just funny that I didn't really realize until, like I said, just, you know, recently that the, what that connection was. So, um, and the fact that all the subjects know each other now is just awesome. So can you talk a little bit about how you first met your film subjects and why you wanted to make, you know, why you did choose to make films about them? I'll start this time. <laughs> um, let's see here. Actually, it was it was a I was working on the first film at Stanford on um, the fires up in Sonora. Um, sorry, Sonoma. And at the time I was going through GoFundMe and I was looking for families that had lost their homes in the fire. And when I was searching through these families, I saw this beautiful photo of this young girl with a bird. And I just saved it. And I was like, I have to just save that. I don't know what it's going on there, but I must save it because it's so beautiful. And then 
I, like six months later, I kind of finally read the GoFundMe page about this young girl who had a beautiful bird that came into her window and it was full of markings because it had been a dove from a wedding release and she brought it back to health and they had this kind of love story and it needed a repair because I ate some safety pins, Miriam, I think that's how it goes. And so I just was so curious with this girl who also at that point I learned became like a rescuer of pigeons. And so I was like, well, it has this great angle where she's rescuing these pigeons and these underdogs in the city. And then she's like going to fight this thing and she's only 10 years old. And then I just made my first meeting where she showed me the rescue of the pigeons and I was blown away by how hard and how demanding, but also like how rewarding it was for her. So. I just pitched it to the thesis film of this program and yeah, I, she kind of, you know, won my heart and decided to commit a year to the story. So. Yeah, um, for the Misfits, I had always wanted to do something about women in STEM, but always struggled to figure out the best visual um, story to tell around it. And then when I thought about robotics, I was like, okay, is there an all girls robotics team that exists in the Bay? And I looked that up and I found out about the Misfits and how they were just absolutely crushing it. They were a really new team on the scene, but they were already doing really amazing things. So I went to go see them in action at Maker Fair, which was the first time I met them in person. I think Maddie was there. I can't remember if Emma was there. Um, and just seeing them giving a demo to young kids and um, who are just coming up interested in learning more and seeing how much these kids were lighting up and how passionate the girls on the team were about it, I just knew there had to be a film there. And so I followed them around. They willingly let me <laughs> join all their team practices and competitions throughout the off season and the season. And I feel really lucky to have gotten to tag along and become a member of the family of the team of the team's family. So Miriam, Emma, and Maddie, maybe if you could tell us um how it felt being filmed and sharing your stories publicly. Maybe Miriam, if you want to start, I mean, certainly for you, you know, it being a, a much more personal story and personal film and some of the things that you talked about in the film that are, um, you know, that are a little more vulnerable, you know, of, of what that experience was like for you. It actually felt pretty good to be able to share kind of my story with, with Whitney and, and Lada and with kind of, with everybody and it felt good to raise awareness to pigeon rescue. And Emma and Maddie, how was it for you to be on, to, to be part of the Misfits and, and to be, you know, have a camera following you around and, and to, you know, be sharing your stories? Emma, do you wanna start? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I like loved robotics from the first time I ever did it. And I think it's kind of an, extracurricular that especially for girls is like not something that people really think of um and so i thought it was really cool to be able to see like hey here's this thing that i'm really passionate about that not a lot of people have a chance to do but it's cool and I like it. how about you maddie yeah i think i agree with that so like emma like i didn't maybe not like Emma, but when I started robotics, I didn't even know if I liked robotics. Um, and then once I did it, I found it, I really loved it. It's part of the reason why I chose engineering um, as my major for college. Um, and then Ellie was there for my last year on the team. So it was really uh, an experience for me to have just all of the um, work that I was doing. Like, I thought it was really amazing to have Ellie there and like capturing all these amazing moments with the team. Like everybody getting close and that was really exciting for me. It was different than previous years because you know we had like a mic and everything and I was like oh my god I can't bring this saw close to me or like make a really loud noise next to it like can't do the percussive maintenance close to that microphone but it was, it was still an enjoyable experience. Did it feel important to you guys too that that you had this forum where you could, you know, where a, a broader world would be aware of, of you guys as an all-female robotics team. I mean, like, you know, Ellie did some research to discover it, but most of us obviously aren't aware of it. Um, and did it feel like it was important for you guys to get that kind of exposure? I think so, yeah. Um, I'm not sure how many people are aware of, you know, when they're talking about high school robotics, you kind of just think of probably 
boy is just like making a robot that does a cool thing and you don't see the kind of point of view that we have of all these girls working with these huge power tools that are sometimes bigger than them and then making a robot that's also bigger than them <laughs> sometimes. Um, and I think it was really amazing for people, people to be able to see girls doing that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Ellie and Whitney, um, did you guys spend a good amount of time kind of getting to know your subjects before you started filming them? Like, I mean, I feel like there's a sense of, you know, of getting your, you know, people comfortable with you being there. And, you know, can you talk a little bit about that process of how you got to know them and, and really get to that place where you felt like you could start making a film? Yeah, so I think Whitney alluded to this, but um, these were both of our thesis films in our second year of our Stanford documentary program. And part of the joy of that was that we got to spend a lot more time than in our first year when we were making three films in one year. This was the only film we made in our second year. And so um, for me with The Misfits, I felt really lucky that I found them in my first year. I actually found out about them in the spring of my first year of school. And so I was able to spend time with them over the summer, um, get to know them, go to these meetings and go to off, off season competitions and see them in action before really starting filming. And um, I think I hope that that helped with everyone feeling comfortable about the camera and this and the crew being around. Um, and I do think hopefully they forgot about me sometimes that I was there, but they were really considerate to me and my sound person and like never did crazy loud things when the mic was near them. So there was some awareness, which was very sweet. <laughs> great, yeah, it's a great question. Um, and I just, it always goes back to being so thankful for Maryam and Cynthia and um, to be able to even like give us that time, right? And to give us the time to a project that you don't really know you know you have a gut feeling and you know your heart is in it but you don't always know like how it's going to come together or what you're even doing so to get the blessing and kind of support from the family was really important so once you kind of start to begin and build that relationship um it was great because we kind of took it slow we took the time where i had like lots of conversations with cynthia about just Maryam's upbringing just her as a child as a mother and the relationship and try to understand her perspective and you know, because I think when you're working with, you know, someone, especially young and, you know, you're, this film is going to be with her life hopefully forever. And so there's a real sensibility to the subject and to the story as, as a caregiver, you know, of the film. So we had a great time just also spending time at home. And then I think that really helped us develop a nice, healthy relationship um, to get a little bit closer to the story and get a little bit closer to Mary Ann and and Pearl, her, her bird. And then we spent, you know, a great amount of time with her actually rescuing the pigeons because it's such a particular shot. You have to like basically, you know, she was so sweet, but we have to put a boom pole and then it scared all the birds. And so we had to kind of assess what would be the best for Maryam so she could still do her job and also participate in the film. But the, always the priority was that Maryam could just focus on the birds because that's what she went out to do that day. And if you interrupted it, you know, you would just, you know, it would just mess up the whole system. So we were so particular about the shot and the setup and letting her um, be herself on camera. And that was also a big part of the conversation with mom is how do we marry and be herself. Um, so hopefully we found that in the edit of who Mary Ann is, so. Right. So Miriam, Emma, and Maddie, now that you've seen the finished films, how do you feel about them and, and seeing your stories on screen? Do you feel like they ac accurately represent your experiences? I think that it was really, the films were really well made and I'm really happy with how, I'm really happy with how mine turned out. And yeah, I think it really, yeah, I think it's, I think it turned out perfect. That's high praise for, for a filmmaker, I would think, Emma and Maddie. Um, yeah, I think just like knowing the sheer amount of footage that like I know Ellie had, um, it's always just amazing to me, like how she managed to get it all to come together. Cause like there was a time she came to my house and interviewed me for like three hours. Like I just started talking and I'm like, and of course there's only like a couple lines from that, that made it to the final film, but it's just like, yeah, she managed to get the essence of the misfits, I think out of just so much. Maddie, what do you think? 
Yeah, I think I really agree with that. Um, just like beyond even going to people's houses, I know that LA Films, I think like our first competition, like two full days straight. And that's a really long time. And I know she was there like whole days while we were working and it was so much footage. But like the end result, just like this amazing like view of our season with like commentary from members of like what they thought a woman in STEM, I thought it was really amazing to watch and it was really empowering and moving. <laughs> so can you, I, I, you mentioned Ellie, your, your sound recorded. Can you talk a little bit, but particularly these being student made films, you know, essentially um, of how, you know, the crews that you had to work with and, and kind of what your, your process looked like from that perspective, you know, I mean, a lot of this, you know, how much you had to do on your own, how much, you know, additional support and, and how that, um, and what your, what your film crews kind of came together as. Yeah, so it was two person film crews <laughs> on the ground. It was just uh, me and my sound recordist, Inesh. Um, but there was a lot of support. Like I feel really invested in Pigeon Girl and like, and Miriam, like we've only met once in person, but I got to watch, you know, so much footage and so many cuts behind the scenes at school. And so there was a lot of support from our program, from our other cohort mates, from our faculty who got to see all the footage and like all the different stages of the film. Um, but I do remember there was one day when we had um, like a boom malfunction and, and Whitney came to the competition. I think this was SFR and she got to see the girls finally, like after months of just seeing the footage of them. And she was like, I think she was starstruck. She was like, oh my gosh, it's Emma, it's Maddie. <laughs> So yeah, we were just really invested in each other's films, I think. Whitney, do you have anything you want to add about your, your production process? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, I'm so glad Ellie brought that memory up because again, like I don't even think I saw you that much besides cuts. And so like to see you in action after like six months of not working together, I was like, yes, I'm feeling it again. And she was all like strapped in her gear and it was just so cool. I felt like you were like actually competing for a robotics team. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, how's the, how's the court? How's this? Did we check this. I'm like, I think we're doing the same thing the girls are doing. Um, not as cool as them. I mean, they're like, you know, next level coolness. Um, but yeah, my production team was the same. It was two people, um, me and my producer, Laura. Um, she was amazing on set because she also was able to talk to Mary Ann a lot, just not even technically, but was able to work through conversations and um, be a real champion for kind of the content for the piece, as well as I could kind of handle the cinematography. So um, I think that duo was really amazing for me as a cinematographer um, who really navigates the creative world visually um, to learn from Lauda and to learn how she can develop a story through a conversation about like, how did that feel Marianne when you like didn't catch that bird or how does it feel now that you're de-stringing things? So I think a lot of the dialogue um, in the film is thanks to Lauda having these great conversations with, um, with Marianne and then Marianne just speaking on, with the lab, which was great. So um, yeah, it was a tight crew, but it, it kind of, I think, made it really intimate, which was nice for, for the project. Um, Miriam and Ellie, oh, sorry, did you want to add? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought, um, I think it's also really empowering that it's just these two person crews. Um, and there's something about that I feel that is mirrored in the subjects of our films. Um, and seeing the girls on the Misfits and seeing Miriam like being so empowered. I think also made me feel more empowered as a filmmaker. Um, so yeah, there was there was a lot of parallels. I think that's that's really great. Um, so Emma, Maddie, and Miriam, can you tell us a little bit about kind of where you're at now? Particularly, obviously, Emma and Maddie, you know, maybe a little bit about your where you're at around robotics, but kind of just where you're. You know, I think Emma, you said you were you were now in college, and kind of just where you're um, where you've landed, and then and then Miriam as well. Maybe we start with with Maddie or Emma. I can go. Um, so I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but robotics led me to love engineering. Um, before I joined robotics, I was really interested in biology. So I'm majoring in biomedical engineering at Case Western Reserve University. Um, and then while I was there, I found out about all of these clubs, like um, we have one called WISER, which is Women in Science and Engineering Roundtable. So I'm part of that. And they also work to encourage girls in STEM and support girls in STEM. 
um, and things like that. And I, <laughs> that was from robotics and I uh, followed doing that. Um, and then there's another one, it's called Society of Women Engineers and it has the very similar purpose of empowering, empowering and supporting women in STEM, um, like the girls at school. And then the Society of Women Engineers also works with like elementary schools to do little robot engineering demos, sometimes working with um, clubs like Girls Who Code to teach them. So I think <laughs> my background in robotics has definitely influenced what I've been doing in college so far. That's so great. That's so great. Um, yeah, I'm a freshman at Tufts in the School of Engineering, um, and I'm a computer science major. As seen in the documentary, I was head of software on the Misfits. Um, so yeah, I really love code. Um, and I'm in the robotics club here and in the Society of Women Engineers. Um, and one of my professors over winter break, I helped him with his research, which is Lego robotics. Um, cool. So yeah, I really love robotics and still do it a lot. And have you guys stayed connected to the Misfits, um, to the club back in you know school, just as far as you know the, the girls that come have come behind you, or you know as mentors, or? Um, I've been mentoring over Zoom, like I've been going to their Zoom meetings and helping them out with code. Um, they're very self-sufficient, so I'm mostly just there watching them. Right. But <laughs> very cool, Maddie. Have you stayed in contact? I have not as much as I would like to. I've kept on the um, teams like communications. So like, I know what they're up to, but I haven't been directly involved as much as I would like to. But I hope that once things are a little bit more normal, I'll be able to attend future kickoffs and things like that. Cool. Miriam, welcome back. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about where you're at now, and particularly your, you know, what you've been doing with with Pigeon Rescue and um, and and your own and your own birds? Yeah, we've. Um, sorry, my phone overheated, but no we've worries. Been, we've been fostering pigeons and providing temporary homes for ones that need it, and I haven't been I haven't been able to go out and really help wild pigeons as much as I've wanted to. But we're actually out right now, and we're hoping to get some work done today. Cool. So can each of you maybe tell me what you would most like viewers to take away from your film? Whoever wants to start. Ellie, you want to start? You're on my top left. That's the only reason. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the dream has always been for people to kind of have the same reaction that I did when I first met the Misfits at Maker Fair, just to, to see people doing something that they love and to follow that passion and to see a place for them to see themselves represented um, and to believe that they can do it too. Nice, Ellie. That's great. <laughs> I definitely felt that in your film, so it's really beautiful. Um, yeah, I think for me, um, and I hope Miriam agrees that uh, she's just, it's, you know, it's not just Miriam rescuing pigeons and birds and pigeons need to have a voice and, you know, and have a future that's provided for them with adequate care. And um, I, I think that that's a very strong message and we should really consider the importance of pigeons and all animals in this world. And I think she does that so gracefully in the way she works with them. Um, because pigeons aren't um, cared for and they're not covered under Wild Care Act. So there is no support besides people like Miriam and her mom and the community that she has built in the city. Um, but I also think that Miriam is really unique in the sense that she's not afraid to be herself. And I think, you know, as we all um, are humans and try to survive, I think it's really hard to be ourselves. And so I want people to also walk away with her strength to be who she is. And so everyone else can have the strength to be who they wanna be and who they deserve to be and uh, they wanna be, so yeah. Is there anything that the rest of you wanna add about what you hope, you know, I mean, in your stories, what, what do you hope that other, um, particularly, you know, we've got a lot of students here watching this program. So, you know, what do you hope that other students take away from that? Um. I would say, like, I think the documentary does a really good job showing that, like, um, 
there's you have all these girls on the team and we're all very different like some of us like mechanical engineering some of us are more software engineering and we all kind of express femininity in different ways um and we can all come together and that's like this one thing that we're really passionate about um so i i really like that and how that comes across Maddie or Miriam, do you have any thoughts on what you want others to think? Yeah, um, actually, I really liked how Ellie described it, just being able to um, have people see themselves, you know, especially like for younger um, viewers who are girls who are maybe thinking about, you know, things that they might be interested in or not, just showing them that all of these girls like on the team and like, Miriam, you know, you are doing things that you love and it's possible to continue doing that. And I think just showing the viewers that it's definitely possible and there are people out there who are in the same position as you um, is something that would be really important to take away from watching these films. Miriam, do you have an add? Um, I was just in, I was watching the film. I watched the film again a couple of days ago and I was just thinking, I, I would hope that 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 what is shown would empower other girls like me to stand up against like gender stereotypes and speak up for what they believe in, and just hoping to empower other girls that just show them that they can make a difference. That's a pretty good thing to take away. So on that note, Miriam, uh, you've got a, a special, as you mentioned, you have a, a pigeon cage in the back of the car and you had uh, offered to do a little demo for us, um, if you're still up for that, of a de-stringing of a pigeon. Yeah, we had a little problem with that. Apparently somebody <laughs> came earlier this morning and fed them a ton, so they were not going anywhere near us. So we could not catch any pigeons. Uh, it's okay. It happens. I would imagine that is the challenge with managing, with working with pigeons is that they're highly unpredictable. I would yeah. imagine that was one of the things probably in making of the film that you could not count on. Yeah, it's kind of, a, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of too bad because right now we're tracking a huge domestic pigeon that's in with the wild ones in this area and we haven't had any luck so far catching it. Hmm. Well, thank you for continuing to try and do that work. It was great to see it in the film. Um, well, I just want to thank all of you for joining us. It was such a pleasure to talk to you all and to hear about your films and to see this great community of both filmmakers and film subjects and just all these great strong women that um, are represented in these two films. You guys are awesome. Um, we are hope we'll get to see new projects from um, Ellie and Whitney from you both. And obviously um, the great work, Maddie and Emma, you're going to continue to do in the robotics field and um, keep up that amazing work with the pigeons, Miriam. It's just really, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks for being here.